Say good morning, everybody. Particularly a warm welcome to those who are here for the first time, especially those who have come to do some ministry in our midst. You are very, very welcome. Um, the, the readings that, that we've listened to um, are all about breaking the boundaries. They're all about reaching out. It's all about making God's love real and present and vibrant. And so this is the Muston Scarecrow Festival. If you thought Teesside had everything, uh, we have everything. This little village of Muston, just outside Filey, every year has a Scarecrow Festival. And if you're willing, you can put your head through the hole and transform yourself into something you are not. Uh, so here is uh, our youngest daughter and her fiancé transforming themselves into scarecrows, owning the identity, being willing even to be photographed at this moment. And this is what Jesus is offering us here in John's Gospel. It's an invitation to everybody and anybody to own his identity, to become like him, and to do that publicly so everybody can see. And here's the reading from the voice translation and what's the most important word in that translation which word is the most important one do you think obey, obey. we're going to be here a long time anyone i would say to you the most important word is the first one because it says anyone there are no limits to God's love. Everybody is included, even if we don't think we deserve it. Even if we think we're the last person God could possibly want anything to do with, Jesus says, no, anyone, anyone can know my love. Anyone, if you love me, if you take on that offer I give to you, if you will be like me, if you will do that and commit yourself to be what you think you're not, but to become who God knows you are, anyone we will draw close and make a dwelling place. But there's something wrong with that translation. What is it? What's wrong with it if we're to be really experiencing that offer that this is to anyone? What's wrong with it? It is going to be a long day. <laughs> Him. Him. So let's have the next one, Ken, if we could. So we'll move from the voice to the new living translation, and we'll say this together. Okay, all together? All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. What a promise! That if we take on that identity, if we accept that love, Jesus and God the Father will come and make their home within us. Wow! And that, that is for anybody, with no limit. Anybody, anybody. And I guess that's what you're taking to the Eastfield Estate, isn't it? That sense? Whoever, who's going? Put your hands up if you're going. I'm trying to see who it might be. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we got a few little tiny timid hands going up. <laughs> There's nothing timid about that image, is there? It's actually literally in your face. You are saying, look, I am going to be this. I am going to be like Jesus and people are going to see that I am and they're going to know the good news for themselves because this is for everybody. It's for all. And we are called to be that human face of love and welcome and acceptance so that when people see us, they see Jesus. Can we have a next one, please, Ken? So there's a random group of people on the top of the old man of Coniston in the Lake District. Now you won't have a clue who they are. Just a group of random punters who climbed up there and they're standing on the top with two dogs. They have no call on you, do they? You don't know who they are. They mean nothing to you. Why should you bother about them. Why should you? It is going to be a long day. They're important to me. This 
is my family. These are the people I am closest to in life. I love them dearly. On the right, you've got our eldest daughter, Becky. Then you've got my wife, Sue. Then you've got Judy, our youngest daughter. You've got her fiancé, Ross, and you've got Becky's partner, Dave. And here are our two fabulous dogs that I am totally besotted with. <laughs> when I was really ill with depression in 2013, and it took about six months to get well again, um, two months in, we had him, the dog, on the right as a puppy. They're Finnish Lapuns. His name is Toivo, which is Finnish for hope. And he was my little bundle of hope that when I didn't think I could get through, he was there. That's his half-brother on the left. We had him a year later, unexpectedly. He'd gone to a family, they'd had him a couple of weeks, and he was being beaten up, he was being abused, he was being mistreated. And the breeder rang and said, she lives in Surrey, I have to tell you this, and she knew we lived in the north, and in her geography, Stoke is the north. <laughs> so she said, could you pop to Stoke and get him and I'll rehome him? Well, five minutes after meeting him, this poor little thing, I'd fallen in love with him and so we kept him. So that is Osco and his name means faith. So we have faith and we have hope. We haven't got charity, at least <laughs> not yet. But they mean the world to me. My heart is full of love for them. And this is how Jesus wants us to look. Not just at those we know, but at those we don't. At those we have no idea about what's going on in their lives. Random people we do not know a thing about, but who are beloved by God and special. And Jesus says to all, to all of you, come on, I love you, just welcome that love, I will dwell in you, I will be with you, and you can be like me. Next one, Ken, if we could. So it's for everybody, this gospel. So when Hull had its year of city of culture, I went to the Ferrans Art Gallery and was really struck by this piece of art, this sculpture, Acceptance, One Race by Wendy Barrington, who was an art student in Harrogate. Uh, what do you notice about it? <coughs> All different? Different how? Colour. Different colours, different <coughs> shapes, uh, height. heights. Yeah, it's, they're all different, and they're all standing together. Um, if we can have the next one, Ken. All who love me, we will come and make our home with each and every one of them. No limits. No limits of gender or ethnicity. No limits of anything. We will come and make our home with them if they love me, says Jesus. What do you think the arms folded says? Solidarity. Could mean don't come. It could mean what else might it mean? You're standing there with your arms folded. Resignation. Resignation. What else might it mean? A barrier. A barrier. Defiance. Defiance. Determination. Could mean bring it on. We are proud of who we are. And if you don't like it, tough. We know we have value. We know we matter. We know. We are loved. We know Jesus died for us. They're in a line waiting to be judged. Next one, Ken. And judged they are. Each and every visitor coming reads the card, reads what this piece of art is trying to say about acceptance. And each visitor who comes makes their own judgment about this row of people. Next one, Ken, if we could. And so we come to that moment when Paul does the extraordinary thing. When, because this is for everybody, he changes his plans just like that. 
He's got everything arranged. They're going to go somewhere. And then he has a vision. And a guy from Macedonia says, hey, come to us. We need help. And what does Paul do? He doesn't say, well, I've been to the travel agent. I've got my tickets. It's all booked. I've got a discount. I've got this. I've got that. I've got the other. Oh, when I'm so busy. And by the way, I can't. Does he? He knows this is God's priority in this moment and he changes everything in an instant to go to those whom God needs. And so he goes to Macedonia. And what happens? He goes outside the city wall, he goes to the river and he doesn't meet a man, he meets who? A group of women who are together. Paul is just pushing through all the boundaries. He's not in the synagogue. He's in the river because he thinks that's, well, people might go there to pray. And we don't know whether they're praying. All we know is Paul finds a group of women and what happens? He sits down and he speaks to them. He offers them all the good news about Jesus. And one of them, Lydia, listens with particular interest. Her heart is prepared. And it happened there. That's where it happened. That's the actual place where Paul went, where Lydia and those women were. That's the water in which she was baptised. This is history, people. This happened. This woman was real. This woman's heart was warmed by God to ready her for what Paul was going to do. And it happened there. Next one, Ken. God had opened her heart to take in the message with enthusiasm. And look what happens. She leans into, she accepts that image of what it is to live a life according to the love of Jesus. And she does that publicly. She changes her identity in a moment. And she is remade. And Jesus and God are dwelling within her powerfully and the whole household. Are baptized. One of the very first Christian converts outside the Holy Land. This woman on the edge of the city by the river leans into and accepts God's love. And those closest to her are converted because she is full of God's love. Next one, Ken. And so what does she say? It's so poignant. If you believe I'm faithful, come and stay at my home. Would you dare say that to somebody? Would you dare say that to somebody now? Oh, if you think I'm really faithful, if you think I'm a really good follower of Jesus, come and have Sunday lunch with me. What might you fear? What might you fear? People would take advantage. They'd say, well, actually, we don't see you much of a Christian. <laughs> you don't look much like Jesus to me. It's awfully sweet of you to invite me for lunch, but actually, where's the evidence? How do I know? It's such a brave question to ask. And they saw in Lydia's response everything they needed to see which convinced them that her heart was full of love for Jesus and for others. And so we're challenged to lean into it, to make sure that we're the ones in whom Jesus' love for each and every person is revealed, even though they are strangers, even though they are not like us, and perhaps particularly because they are not like us. And when the election results are out this evening, and when all hell breaks loose, and the bickering starts, and the division starts, and the anger is outpoured, as it will be, we remember this, that we are the ones who are called to say there is no stranger, there is no other. We will not scapegoat, we will not divide we will not separate because there is one Lord and one love for each and every single person. And when people meet us, that's 
what Jesus wants them to know and to see and to be. So just look around at the people around you. Go and have a look. They won't bite. Well, they might not. Just have a look. Go on, turn around. Have a good look at those around you. Shall I tell you what I see? There's a little bit of hesitation going on. But all of a sudden, from being mightily bored at what I was drizzling on about, you suddenly started to smile. And your eyes lit up, most of you, as you looked around. I didn't tell you to smile, did I? I didn't tell you to actually come alive with love on your face. But you did it. The single most important thing you can do is continue to do that and be that for every single person you meet. Especially those you don't know. Especially those who are different to you. Those who would be other or stranger. Be as Jesus to them. <laughs>